In this video, I'll be going over how I made these 10 firecrackers. The fuse and gunpowder I made in previous videos, so if you haven't checked those out, go check them out. Let's get started. To begin, I cut out 10 strips of paper, each strip being 1.5 inches long. These will make 10 firecrackers, which will hold 8 to 10 grams each. To roll them, I used a thick marker with a flat bottom. If you can't find a marker like this, chapstick with the end hot glued on will be fine. The end needs to be attached because we'll use the same piece to cut back the gunpowder in a later step. Once the paper was rolled tightly, I used some scotch tape just to keep it held in place, and then I moved on to rolling the rest of them. Next, I got a piece of paper, folded it as fast as tape would fold Logan, and measured out how big I needed my end pieces to be. The next step is to develop carpal tunnel by cutting out a ton of circles. In theory, you need 40 of them, two for each side, but in practice, some turn out so small, so cutting access would be wise. Now you can't see it because of my massive bicep blocking the camera, but I'm just making sure the size of the holes that I cut actually fit into the tubes. And then I put the marker in just to check the marker size, and this will be important for a later step when we pack them. After I got some Chinese kids to finish the rest of it, I uh, put away the stuff and moved on to the next step. Alright, so next I pulled out a hot glue gun and started to hot glue those caps that we just caught onto the ends of the firecrackers. If you don't have a hot glue gun, it's fine. Just use duct tape or gorilla tape. The reason you don't want to use scotch tape is because the ends are going to be the weakest part of the firecracker. The stronger the tubes are, the louder the firecracker is because the more pressure we allow to build up in them. And if the ends are weak, then the ends are just going to blow out immediately. And this is why you also need those end caps on there, just to add a little bit of extra strength. If you just tape it over a bunch of times, you're going to use way too much tape. It's going to be diminishing returns. So you can see, after I hot glue that initial cap on, I'm going to take another piece of paper and just top off so that the extra hot glue doesn't stick around and, I don't know, burn me or stick to the workspace that I have. All right, next was the packing part. So this is probably the longest part, and pretty much you scoop up some gunpowder, you take your rounding rod, your chapstick, your marker, whatever it is, and you start packing in the gunpowder. It needs to be tight, and you wanna try and get as much gunpowder in a tube in as you can. So once I scoop some in, I take my marker, and I push it down again, and I repeat this process until I get it pretty much to the top.
Once the tube was completely filled, I set it off to the side and moved to the next one. For these ones, I'm actually going to be using some aluminum flakes so that when the fire characters explode, it would be a bit more theatrical. Now these aluminum flakes have been covered in carbon so they don't get oxidized, but in theory some cut up aluminum foil will work just as well. Once it seemed like I had a good amount of aluminum flakes, I capped it and then I mixed up the aluminum flakes into the gunpowder. Now, it doesn't matter how much flakes you add, it's just however sparky you want it to be. If you add too much, you're going to have unburnt aluminum just strewn over the ground as soon as your firecracker explodes. Once these were all packed, I got my glue gun back, and now it's time to put the rest of the caps on. This is one of the final steps. We'll have the entire casing, then it's just strengthening the casing and adding the fuse. So initially, I hot glue around the cap and allow the glue to cool off a little bit. I have the hot glue gun on a low setting, so the glue actually doesn't get hot enough to ignite the gunpowder in any shape or form. And then I add it on top. I'll then add another hot glue ring around the firecracker and put some more caps on. The next part of this process is wrapping the shells in duct tape. I've used Gorilla Tape in the past and it creates much louder sound, but it's also more expensive to buy. Not reinforcing it will severely dampen the sound, so you need to make sure that you do this. The way I found that works best is ripping off a small bit of duct tape about this long in length, and then ripping it into four small bits. And these four lengths will go over the tips of the shells and then that'll reinforce them enough so that when the shell explodes you won't actually see it explode through the tips.
once I know that the ends are secure, then I'll rip off a big piece of duct tape and actually wrap the entire shell in it. So the goal of this is to just make the shell a lot stronger so that when the gunpowder starts to ignite and release gas inside the shell, it can't escape. And what causes the explosion sound is the gas escaping at a high pressure and breaking the shell. The last and most important part of the process is adding the fuse. The reason why it's the most important is because sometimes you'll get firecrackers that don't actually explode or ignite and the fuse just does. And those are always scary. You leave them for five to ten minutes uh, until you know the fuse is completely out and cold before you figure out a way to retrieve it. Anyways, what I'm doing here is I'm using a tool to poke through and poke a little hole that I can add the fuse into. You can use one of those poker bamboo sticks that you can get at the dollar store, but I happen to have a metal one. And what I'm doing is I'm poking a hole, I'm working around the compacted gunpowder within it, and then I'm moving on to the next one. Next up, I grab the fuses that I made in the previous video, and I line them up getting ready to put them into the fire. So I realized that the holes that I made are slightly too small. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a pencil and I'm making the hole bigger. And so it doesn't need to be too sharp, it's just making the hole bigger. And we'll know once the hole is adequate, then I'll be able to sprinkle some gunpowder over top of the hole and then put the fuse in. The reason why I put gunpowder over top is to give the fuse a better chance of actually lighting and igniting the gunpowder within it. I've just found better results, maybe 80% success rate with this method, whereas if you don't do it, I found that with homemade fuses at least, they died a lot quicker. If you're using a store-bought fuse or professional fuse, there's no need to do this. There's no need to poke another hole even. You just shove the fuses and it'll work. But if you're using a homemade fuse, they tend to be faulty and not work all the time. So I would suggest doing this method. Once all the fuses were set, here are all the firecrackers that I got. Something worth noting is if you wrap an extra piece of tape around where you put the fuse in, it'll make the structure stronger. After they explode, take a look at the shell casing and see where it rips, and then you'll know where you need to reinforce more.
in the background, I have a firecracker failing, meaning that the hole was too big or it was wrapped too tightly. The white sparks you see are merely the aluminum catching up fire and burning. So you can choose whether or not you want to add the aluminum. I would say do it. It doesn't take away from the sound much. Something worth noting is that these are much louder in person, so be careful where you light them off, make sure it's legal. And if you're standing too close, you can even sometimes feel the pressure shockwave as it hits you. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you next time.